Good evening, folks. Welcome to round six of the North American Grand Prix GT2 Championship. Coming to you live from Barber Motorsports Park in Birmingham, Alabama. I'm happy to have Brad Maris alongside me here tonight. Brad, welcome. Yeah, always a pleasure, Al. Thanks for having me once again. And... Boy, what a great track we've got here tonight. It's about the complete opposite kind of track that we had last week at Monza. Uh, and it is a pleasure for me to be here. These guys, I don't know if this track's going to be a pleasure for them. This is going to be a tough, brutal hour of racing for these guys tonight. Going to be a lot of fun for us to watch, though. It certainly is. It is a challenging and a demanding track, both on the driver and on tire wheels. Tires are going to be a huge factor here tonight. So let's take a quick look at this track map. Birmingham layout, uh, Barber Motorsports Park, this layout, uh, 14 corners. Uh, it's kind of got a similar corkscrew that you see at uh, Laguna Seca, but the, the final complex there, turns 13, 14, and 15, really devastating on the tires. Yeah, devastating and very tricky corners to get through too, especially to get through, uh, let's say, side by side with uh, uh, 36 of your close friends. So uh, a, a challenge all around here tonight uh, with a lot of different aspects to it. Uh, a lot of bumps around this place, uh, tire management, as you say, and uh, just keeping the darn thing on track uh, as well. So it's going to be an interesting event, and the driver who comes away with this one is certainly going to have earned it. Certainly will. I'm hoping the pictures are coming through clear for you guys, for you folks at home. Uh, without shop, I don't know, something's going on with my laptop lately, but everything looks good. We'll proceed. Yeah, you're good, Al. All right, well, shocking turn of events here as we have newcomer tonight, Wyatt Gooden, at the top of the time sheets. Uh, for those of you who have watched, uh, NAGP races in the past, uh, you may remember a guy by the name of Nick Johnson. Well, apparently this fella is friends with Nick, and he comes here. Uh, it's like showing just as much uh, pace as Nick showed when he first showed up. So it's going to be interesting to, to watch him around here in his uh, debut here at NAGP. Yeah, and I can tell you, Nick Johnson did have a lot of speed, but was a little lacking in some other areas uh, here at NAGP, namely uh, in his pit stops. We saw quite a few good runs uh, negated by pit stops from Nick Johnson, but uh, it's Wyatt here tonight, not Nick Johnson after all, and uh, Wyatt does have a pretty extensive sim racing background, so uh, no stranger to the competition out there, and uh, certainly has gotten in a lot of practice here uh, in this this week of practice getting ready for this race so we'll see what it's like as he uh, starts to slog through the uh, the rest of the season and uh, how he holds up with all the other stuff he's got to take care of and prepare for here tonight David Poole we saw him briefly he's looking good this is personally one of his favorite tracks and Juan Monterey looking good as well he had a tough week last week as we move now into the qualifying session Yeah, moving over into qualifying, Al, and this is going to be a very tough qualifying for these drivers. Not much room out on this track. There's going to be a lot of laps spoiled, and these guys are only going to have 25 minutes to get their best lap, and it will be a challenge for some of these guys. There may be even a couple that don't get their best lap in due to uh, traffic. Absolutely, and as you see, David Poole is going to be the first to act. He's coming out uh, just on his out lap now. We get an idea, see if we can get an idea how this track Looks from his onboard here as he tries and uh, makes his way around the track. He's approaching uh, turn eight now. This is that kind of opposite corkscrew corner here at uh, Barber, uh, which leads onto the back straight. This back straight has a little bit of a kink in the middle, but it's certainly flat if you get it right get it wrong you can end up in the tire barriers there on the right and then through this, this downhill this sector three portion of the track and this portion right here these last uh, three quarters I was talking about really long and, and, and 
slow and kind of just brutal on the tires. Yeah, brutal on the tires. Tight, technical, very difficult to pick up your entry points there and uh, difficult to get on the accelerator with some of the bumps that are right on the turns. You can take advantage of some late braking on this track. There are a couple spots where um, actually braking uh, as late as you possibly can will uh, help improve your lap time. So there's going to be quite a few guys. Uh, we'll see some lockups and we'll see some guys sliding off the apex uh, on some of these qualifying laps. So as we follow David Poole around on this uh, opening lap, you can already see the traffic up ahead for him coming into uh, play here. We, believe it or not, we do not have any no calls this uh, particular session, but we do have several penalties to go over the, the time stamps from last week at Monza. Uh, a track where, uh, you know, it's not uh, Monza. Well, isn't really a favorite of most people, but uh, it's still a technically challenging circuit, and uh, we saw a lot, a lot more ugliness than we would have liked throughout that race. Hopefully, uh, things get better here, but uh, something tells me it's the nature of this track. It's going to be frustrating for some, for sure. But we'll go through those two penalties uh, momentarily here. Let's qualify. Yeah, there, you know, will probably be a few contacts out there, but the drivers have been put on notice, and they will clean it up. I, I feel very strongly about that. Now, one more thing, a track note here. One thing we will have to watch uh, for is that these times are going to be extremely close. So even just a couple tenths in this qualifying period could move you up five, six, even seven spots. Uh, going to be incredibly close times here, not only in this qualifying session, but throughout the race tonight as well. David Poole. Jumps out to a 21 1 opening lap provisional pole. Give you an idea what we had here last time we ran was in uh, December of 2010. The race that was won by Aaron Parsons. by Parsons, he actually took the, uh, the trifecta as Wyatt Good clocks in at P2, just behind David Poole. 21-1 so, uh, for Poole, 21-3 for Good. Monroy looking sharp with a 21-5. Yeah, looking sharp on that opening qualifying lap for Juan, and also looking sharp in practice with what we have to assume was race fuel on board as well. So Juan Monroy looking to, uh, off to a good start here early. Monroy has been having some uh, technical problems with his connection, so uh, instructed to keep an eye on him tonight. So if he does start to warp a bit, he may have to get bumped back in the field. But let's hope that doesn't happen. As he's looking good as uh, Parsons, a little too aggressive on the throttle there, takes it into the wall. As ooh, Marty Uren up in sector two by eight hundredths of a second. So Marty. He had a strong run at Monza last week. Yeah, all of these sectors are actually pretty important around this place, Al, but uh, you will see the biggest disparity probably there in Sector 2 um, for some of these guys, as some have just really figured out that chicane complex uh, better than others, and the breaking in and drive out, extremely critical in that second sector. So Marty loses a bit there in Sector 3 and falls back. So, Andres Preto on an outlet, on an outlet but uh, I should say, quality time here in our last event was a 21.9. So, right away, these guys are well ahead of that pace, set back in 2010. Fast lap in that race was a 23.1. Hmm, interesting. I wonder if uh, there was some extreme heat coming to play. It seems like maybe I remember something about that, uh, but uh, but can't recall for sure. Alex White about to complete a lap. White, P6. Chris Moses heading out. Now currently P8. Montgomery Jr. Is for a 
Tech's off at set to one. Phil finishing well last week at Monza. Yeah, good run for Salem, and I'm kind of wondering about some of these times at David Poole 21-1. Uh, running there, 20, mid-21s with the race pace on. You wouldn't expect, uh, uh, unlike a lot of tracks, the qualifying pace to be a whole lot lower than those race paces. So I'm wondering just how low these guys can go. As we see Wyatt uh, Gooden actually jump to the top spot now with a 21 flat. quickly Christian Hamilton. Christian Hamilton has been putting in some great efforts here of late the last couple three weeks both in GT1 and GT2 but has run into some horrible luck. He's the the bad luck uh, recipient award so far this season. Hopefully now that we're uh, through midway that uh, luck will turn around for him but uh, Christian Hamilton looking strong here of late. So the vets finished 1-2 last season. Uh, last time we raced here I should say and uh, Mike uh, Trusts are in that Z06, so that, that car won here. It'll be interesting to see how Mike does. Rich Roman. Rich Moore Roman filling in this evening. Looks like he's filling in for Ken Rodriguez, who's unable to attend tonight. So Rich currently in P4. Currently uh, second place in the GT1 standing, the driver standing. So Rich. Rich does a great Roll typically as a filler driver here in GT2. I haven't seen him too much this season, but I think this is his first his first bid here in GT2 this season. Looks like he's, had, he's got his hands full with that. Ferrari. Yeah, I suspect he does. That Ferrari might not be a great performer around this track. It uh, is not so happy over big bumps. So David Poole with the 21 flat as well. He's only six hundredths of a second off of Gooden as Rodrigo Triana. Wow, he jumps up to P4 with 21.3. Preto with a 21.2, currently third. Yeah, and that's the guy that I'm looking at at the moment, Andres Prieto, carrying some weight ballast, actually, a good 40 kilos. Uh, Wyatt Gooden, it should be said, is as, as well, but Andres Prieto with that 40 kilos, a uh, uh, nice time for him in there in P3. So yeah, I, feel, I did fail to mention that as David Poole is up in Sector 2. Finishes up this lap. Yeah, I don't know if he had a great entry to that uh, second to last corner or not, Al. Did look a little uh, suspect. Oh, good enough, though. Into the 20s with a 120.8. Great lap by David. Yeah, indeed, and uh, I wasn't sure how low that they could go. I don't know that there's going to be too much more than that. Uh, you know, hopefully uh, David or someone else will prove me wrong, but I would say that that's a fantastic lap. Well, I'm starting to see why this is his favorite track. One of his favorite tracks is he's uh, rather quick. we got a boatload of traffic out here now. This guy's doing their best to stay out of the way. Frank are doing a good job there. But... Rodrigo Triano up to P4. So, very impressive run so far here for Rodrigo. Mario has dipped down to P5. Wright remains in sixth. Monroy's dropped down to seventh. David Raley now at P8. Devin Miller. Miller looking sharp. Currently P9. 
looking sharp here in qualifying and looking sharp in the week of practice as well. It's carried over into this qualifying session. Now uh, only 15 minutes to go here. Wow, Aaron Parsons and Chris Moses. Parsons winning last week, Moses in second last week. Both of them languishing back at 10th and 11th. So that weight looks like it's having its uh, effects on those guys as we should see them. Suspect we'll see them move up a little bit here in the sands, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. Monahan, Mikey Monahan, P12, go ahead, Brad. Uh, yeah, no, sorry, I was just going to mention real quick, Aaron Parsons and Chris Moses languishing a little bit, but uh, their positions there from 9th all the way down to about 16th, uh, 17th actually, a couple tenths, uh, just covered all those uh, positions right there. So very close times, lots of room to move up. Coming Jr., 13th. Lucknuts has dipped down to 14. Hamilton now uh, falling back to 15. Let's see where he ends up. He is about to complete a lap. And he moves up one position to 14. So I trust that he's now in the 16th spot. Roman. Roman at 17. Esteban Palacio, uh, 18. Sorry. Felipe Triana running on P19. Ryan Schleif, there he is, GT1 competitor. He's making his debut here in GT2 in the Sunred, actually, currently in P20. Ryan drives the Pagani in GT1 and got his first pole position last week at Spa. Yeah, that was a great qualifying, a great qualifying effort. Had great pace out there. If not for a tire snafu when the uh, wet stuff started to come down, Ryan would have been in great shape uh, to contend for that win. Yeah, it was a tough break for Ryan, but uh, definitely something to build on for him. Great tricks, 21st. Lorette Bassman currently P22. Not sure if uh, Laurent has gotten a handle on this Porsche just yet. Ran pretty competitively in GT1, but I haven't quite seen the same type of pace in GT GT2 just yet for Laurent. It's John Houston's back at 24th. Alejandro Nieto, 25th. Ray Myers, 26th. Ivy, 27th. Cup Douglas running 28th. Shubat, 29th. Carter, Chuck Carter, big story last week. Finishing in the top 10 at Monza, currently P30. Ben Wilkes at 31st. John Watt at 32nd. Matt Taylor, 33rd. Huge grid here tonight, huge field. 34th, Brian Story. Mascarelli, 35th. Miss Jackson running 36th. Rashna Khalili, 37. There's your rundown thus far. David Poole continues to lead. Yeah, in fact, has bettered his time by a couple yep. tenths, Al. Yep. Wyatt Good remains in second place. Let's see where he ends up. Ooh, Wyatt. Dips into the 20s, but still. Two tenths off David Poole, so that was a great lap by Wyatt. Yeah, I was wondering if he was going to be able to answer, and obviously he was able to. Just, uh, just didn't quite give the correct answer there. He's going to get a few more laps in, but time quickly running out for Wyatt Gooden. Yep, just under ten minutes now left here in qualifying. Yeah, you know, another guy we didn't really, uh, haven't talked much about here is Alex White, currently sitting in the sixth uh, position provisionally. Uh, and, of course, Alex White, as usual, carrying a tremendous amount of weight. Yeah, you wonder if at what point that, that weight's going to start catching up to him. Well, he's been carrying max weight the last couple weeks. I don't think it's going to catch up to him. What it's going to do is uh, occasionally on tracks like this where tire wear is a big issue, 
is that it will hurt them a bit uh, during the race. Now, if these guys, like last week, don't uh, really make it easy for him and give him a bunch of positions, then uh, he's going to be in great shape. So, so yeah, that's what they need to do. And he does struggle uh, with all this weight during the races. They can't let him off the hook. They have to make sure that they uh, they keep those positions in front of him. Well, we did touch on that last week. Uh, you made note of that. That's Preto about to complete his lap. Preto does not approve. So and that's off. Go ahead. Sorry, Al, I just wanted to make sure that I didn't take anything away from Alex White. Obviously, he's been uh, doing a great job behind the wheel. So that's, uh, uh, you know, obviously he's he's uh, doing a great job out there with that weight. Yeah, but from what what we saw last week, I mean, obviously Parsons and Moses did what they needed to do. They finished out ahead of White, but White was languishing back in the field, starting almost mid-pack, but as, as uh, things started to transpire throughout that race, we saw some incidents and people going off, and it just gave White an opportunity to move right up, in the, right up the field. That was a big thing for him, and staying out of trouble that last week, so. But he has dipped on a P7 as someone has moved up here. Let's take a look as Looks like Juan Monroy now is hooked up to P5. His teammate David Rally in P8, but behind White does not approve. Chris Moses has jumped up to P9. Time continues to tick off here. Now under seven minutes left to go in this qualifying period, and uh, we had, yeah a couple guys there are leading the way. Dave Poole and Wyatt Gooden obviously putting in a couple laps. The rest of the field very tightly bunched up. So it could very well be the David Poole White uh, Wyatt Gooden show. But boy, there's so many storylines that'll play out over the course of this race with tire wear. And, uh, and little mistakes made out there and uh, possible contacts and uh, it's going to be a good one. I'll tell you what, what Wyatt Gooden does for Alex White. Here's a guy that's got, obviously he's displaying a tremendous amount of pace. But in the end, should, should Gooden continue to run here on Monday nights and uh, finish well tonight, he's taking away points from, from White's closest competitors. So he's taking points away from Preto, Moses, Parsons, all those guys who are challenging him for the title. That's just going to play into uh, White's hands. That's a very good point, Alan, not to be too uh, uh, self uh, uh, boastful here or anything, but that uh, the same thing allowed me to win a championship back there in season seven in the GT1 class with newcomer. Uh, coming in and splitting up me and Aaron Parsons in a very close battle that came down to the wire. So, yeah, that could certainly play out over the last half of this season. That's right. So David Poole up a hundredth of a second in sector one. So Poole continuing to run well. Yeah, Wyatt uh, did actually improve that lap time last uh, last time by. Uh, closed within a tenth of David Poole, so he's getting closer. Loses a little bit of time in that second sector. He's going to have to turn 14. Corner, you think you could take flat, but you do. You end up as pool improves to a one just slightly. Three hundredths of a second, but still improves on his best time. Yeah, you you can take that one particular corner flat out, but you really have to be careful. It's the entry on the next corner if you have a lot of speed and just exactly when to roll that roll off the throttle. You have to kind of roll off the throttle uh, there and and just just barely kind of breathe the brakes a little bit to set the 
car in and uh, if you're carrying a little bit too much speed, you can blow that uh, second to last corner really easy. So good. Ran, ran, ran a little bit wide there at the exit of one, so I don't think that's going to help him. Uh, he lost a bunch of time. Yeah, Andres Pritt, I uh, don't, don't know if you caught it or mentioned it, I might have been elsewhere, uh, he has gotten down to a 21 flat. Very nice time for Andre. So Andre, tough, tough week last week. Drop it down to the fourth position. I made a little bit of a typo in my write-up. I said that uh, Parsons, uh, Brayto was in second. He's actually dropped down to fourth while Parsons moved in. He's moved in a second in the, in the uh, driver's championship. We'll touch on that. moment here, but tough race last week for, for Andres. One to forget for sure for, for Team Columbia. Yeah, I was actually running pretty well to start that race, but had some trouble had some trouble uh, toward the end of it, and uh, those are the brakes. You just, uh, you gotta keep fighting. Preto. Oh, what a great lap. Moves into the 20s, so the three guys in the 20s, and look at this, Rodrigo Triana continues, still remains at fourth. And yeah. We've had some great laps. Go ahead, Brad. Yeah, yeah, absolutely great laps for Rodrigo, and I think Andres Prieto maybe has uh, figured something out here, but he's running out of time. I think he's going to get one more timed lap, so uh, he'll have to put his, uh, what he, whatever he's learned to good use, but he's, uh, he's within spitting distance. Couple minutes to go here. We're uh, on board with Juan Monroy. It looks like uh, Jaime Moore, Triana's teammate, has dropped from qualifying. He was in practice, so unfortunately, Jaime Moore has been performing quite well in recent weeks here in that portion. Well, I think if Andres Pirito had gotten out of his pit stall, right, uh, when he had come back in, he might have had a chance for another lap, but uh, now it's it's too late. Uh, Andres Pirito will not get another timed lap in. He's going to be no better in P3. So Monroy's jumped up to P4. So drop Triana back a lap. I mean, uh, uh, a position, sorry. David Poole just behind Wyatt Good. He's closing seconds here. He's closing minute in qualifying. He Wyatt behind there in sector one, and he's off the throttle. He sparked it. Just looking through timing and scoring, it looks like Mike Monahan has jumped up into the eighth position with a good lap here late. So everybody. Wyatt Gooden is done. Yeah, he's done. Everybody's parked it. David Poole. Doesn't look like anybody else is going to be able to touch that time he's thrown down, so. Yes, he's up big in sector two. Over a tenth. A little bobble there on the exit. Yep, this is just for uh, for showing off here. Let's see if he gets it done. No, oh, he doesn't. Yeah, he just lost a bit of time there at the end. Yeah, that last corner, I think he was a little wide off the last corner. Otherwise, I think that time would have come down a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. Jaime Moore is here. He's running P10. Not sure if he's going to be able to get this one in here. Aaron Parsons coming to the line. Oh, and was running out of fuel. Does not improve from his 16th position. Wow. That is uh, quite amazing to see Parsons that far back. Uh, yeah, it is. And his practice times were not looking good. And uh, apparently it's they weren't very good because they weren't very good in qualifying either. So Jaime gets it in and proves to P. 
nine. Bob Stabers rally. Yeah, David Rowley looking uh, losing a couple spots there late in that session, just in the last couple minutes to Mike Monahan and Jaime Moore. So that's it. We're done with qualifying. David Poole laying down the law here in qualifying with a 120.6. Why good and take it second on his debut here at NAGP with a 120.7. And Andres Preto third with a 120.8. The only guys in the 20s. Yeah, that's right. And then it's the story of uh, fourth through twenty-third, and all those guys are covered by about a second. Well, let's take a quick look at the standings leading up to tonight's race. <coughs> well, before we do that, let's take a rundown of the penalties from last week. So we mentioned that I mentioned that um, there were no no uh, first lap incidents last week but there were several submissions throughout that race and uh, you know we Brad and I uh, did mention the uh, what we were seeing on track uh, was not looking too good and uh, we saw quite a quite a few uh, incidents last week well let's take a look at the first one here this first one is Thomas Schubeck just losing and unbreaking um, into turn one causing a real um, cluster there going into one but uh, I'm not sure if he was just running a little too much front brake bias or what but it was just one of those deals where the rear end came around on him I don't think he was trying to uh, cut that corner off on uh, Preto or more. I'm not sure who, I mean uh, Juan Ram. don't remember who that was but that cost uh, Shubes uh, a penalty that's uh, 15 kilograms of weight ballast for tonight Next one up here was uh, Palacio and Kevin Miller. The first one here was on Palacio with a late block on Miller. He got up 10 kilograms of, of uh, weight balance. And then following next corner, Kevin Miller gets into the back of Palacio at the exit of Lesbos. And that, uh, that got Miller 20 kilograms of weight. So you see Palacio giving uh, Miller the old block there. So. Both of them at fault. Yeah, and for Miller, I don't think that was a case of retribution. Uh, Esteban actually did get a little loose in that Lesmo, too. Uh, it slowed him up a little extra bit, but uh, in any event, it was definitely contact on Miller. Next one up here, Alejandro Nieto getting into the back of Krishna Khalili. Khalili going off into the gravel there. That was uh, 15 for Nieto. Doesn't wait for him, just drives off. So that was, that was uh, one thing we mentioned last week in the penalty review was when you do knock somebody off, um, it's good sportsmanship to wait for that person and give them the position back if it's uh, safe to do so. Obviously, if you got uh, you know a ton of cars around you, then obviously it's, you don't want to put others in jeopardy. So if it's, if it's safe to do it. Do it. Otherwise, uh, kind of left with no choice. Next one here is Savoie. Kevin Savoie getting into the back of one of the Vipers. I believe that was Matt, either Wilkerson or Taylor. I don't remember who, but uh, getting both Halili and the Viper damage there. So Savoie getting 10 kilograms for that. Next one up here is Kreshna Khalili. Khalili getting into the back of Savoie. And then we have uh, Alejandro Nieto again getting into the back of Thomas Schubeck just dumping him on uh, the old dump and run here. So Nieto's have uh, three races in a row with some some incident similar to this and uh, so he's carrying Matt's ballast here tonight so he's going to have to uh, clean that stuff up and finally here Mike Greatrex uh, getting into the back of Thomas Schubeck Schubeck in the Mercedes so that earned Greatrex 10 kilograms of weight balance 
Yep, Mike did uh, did wait. Uh, he got going again. Uh, uh, he he gave it a a couple laps, but slowed it up enough for Thomas to get back by and uh, knocked off a bit of weight for Mike. So for those of you out there uh, watching the live stream, if you go to uh, NorthAmericanGP.com and click on the GT2 live timing there at the top, click on that, you can bring up the timing for tonight's race. If for uh, if you're not following, whoever you're watching, uh, give you an idea where they are on track. Good little tool to use. Follow your favorite driver. Also, so we've got some shirts available right on the uh, main page there, and a GP T-shirt. So go ahead and order up a T-shirt and uh, support the league at the same time, and we'll uh, send it out to you anywhere. Yeah, definitely some sexy shirts, and uh, we should thank our viewers, by the way, for tuning in tonight. If you uh, do happen to be tuning in on Twitch TV, you're welcome to click that follow button. And it would be appreciated if you did so. So uh, thanks, guys, for your continued support. Yes. Thank you for all that. So let's take a look at the standings here in GT2. Drivers Championship, Alex White leading the way with 111 points. Aaron Parsons, 85 in second. Chris Moses is in third with 84. Great though, after last week, dropped down to fourth with 81, and Marty Uran in fifth, back with 50 points. The team championship, WWRL7, that's uh, White and David Rally. They lead with 142. Team Columbia in second with 124. Precision Motor Racing, that is uh, Chris Moses and Thomas Schubeck. They have, uh, they're in third with 114. He brought Dan Bam GT2, that's uh, John Houston and Aaron Parsons in fourth with 112 points, and Kung Fu Racing fifth, Ian Joe LaCour and Marty Uren with 76 points. Yeah, and taking a look at that the Precision Motor Racing team of Chris Moses and Thomas Schubeck, you know, Thomas has really uh, added some points for that team this season and kept them uh, kept them in it pretty well against the 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 very powerful WWRL7 and Team Columbia team. So good job for PMR here uh, midway through the season. Yeah, and that's the thing. Team Columbia, I should mention, Andres Preto and Juan Monroy, they formed Team Columbia. Well, they had a tough week last week, opened the door for some of these other guys to close the gap a bit, uh, specifically uh, PMR and T Brock Dam Bam. But like you've mentioned in the past, Brad, the team championship swings uh, <laughs> quite uh, dramatically week to week so one week uh, one week you could find yourself in the, in the lead the next week you could find yourself dead so anything can happen in the team championship yeah well so far so good for that team Columbia with Andres Prieto and Juan Monre uh, starting there in third and fourth um, it should be mentioned David Rally. Uh, the other half of that WWLR7 team, or whatever the hell it's called, <laughs> uh, qualifying pretty well there in 10th to, uh, of course, Alex White. We know what kind of pace he can have, so still a tight team battle. I love those team points, Al. Yes, I love them as well. So let's take a, let's see if we can talk to somebody here. Hold on. Rich Roman, do you copy? Copy. See you filling in for uh, Ken Rodriguez in that 458. How's the car feeling? We saw you have a couple laps and uh, looked like you had your hands full a little bit. Yeah, the car is probably better than I am right now. <laughs> Just, you know, trying to last minute sub is uh, a little rough when uh, you don't have any practice and uh, all that kind of stuff. Well, it's a tough track tonight, so hopefully your your 
long experience here in NAGP and in these race conditions will help move you up a few spots. Uh, good, good luck. You didn't just say this is a night race, did you? No. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> nope, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to add more difficulty. But uh, thanks, guys. And uh, sure, if you want to try and check in with me, go ahead. <laughs> All right, we'll do. Thanks, Rich. Good luck. All right, well, there you have it. Rich Roman. About to take the grid. Well, while well, we got some time, we're in the race. Ambient 85 degrees, 99 degree track temp, sunny conditions. Let's run down the starting order from pole. David Poole, second. Wyatt Gooden. Making his debut, third, Andres Preto, Juan Monroy starting fourth, Rodrigo Triana fifth. Marty Uren starts sixth, Alex White starts seventh, Mike Monahan is in eighth, Jaime Moore is in ninth, and David Rowley starts tenth. Chris Moses, eleventh, Felipe Triana twelfth, Salem Montgomery Jr. thirteenth, Laurent Vassman fourteenth, and Christian Hamilton fifteenth. Aaron Parsons starts 16th, Kevin Miller starts 17th, Johnny Lugnuts is in 18th, Mike Tressler starts 19th, and Ryan Schleife is in 20th. Roman 21st, Thomas Schubert 22nd, Esteban Palacio 23rd, John Houston 24th, and Alejandro Nieto 25th. Gregory Myers is in 26th, Jack Ivey is in 27th, Gup Douglas starts 28th, Krishna Khalili starts 29th, and Dan Wilkerson rounds out the top third. Chuck Carter, 31st, 32nd, John Wathen, Brian Story, 33rd, Matt Taylor, 34th, Lou Mascarelli, 35th, and Chris Jackson, 36th, bringing up the rear. So, track continues to heat up. It always seems to be hot here in Alabama. And, um, Well, I think these guys are going to have their hands full tonight, especially with this tire strategy. Oh, yeah. Sit back, relax, and uh, and just <laughs> see what happens in this one, man. So this first corner could be interesting. We're about to go green here from Birmingham. Round six on the way. As... It looks like someone's gotten into the back of the pole set of David Poole. Looks like that might have been uh, Preto. That's Wyatt Gooden. Leads the field into turn number two. I'm sorry, turn three. David Poole rejoins in 31st. What a tough break for him. Loret Vassman has dropped back to 32nd, so he started around 14th. Ooh, Parsons. Parsons looks like he's out of the race. Is he mo is he moving? Oh, he's uh, he, I think he stalled. He's got it fired back up, but he's going to drop back to the rear. So, wow, tough break for Parsons. And it looks like Wilkerson's got a puncture. So in his first race, Wyatt Gooden leading his first lap here at NAGP in the GT2 series. So he's got Par uh, Preto immediately behind him. Preto trying to hang on and not lose much time to Gooden. I couldn't tell if Poole got off, got a slow start there, or if uh, if Preto just got into the back of him. Yeah, not sure, Al. I wasn't uh, up there watching that. I was, however, watching Johnny Lugnuts up and do the tenth spot. However, I threw it off track, and now it is back in the fifteenth position. But good start for Johnny Lugnut.
Gooden continues to lead, looking for the back. It's uh, Team Columbia running second and third as Marty Uran is starting to close in a little bit on Monroy. Mentioned this race has a max distance of 42 laps. We should go the distance here tonight. Yeah, it will be difficult. Go ahead, bro. It will be difficult keeping up with some of the position swaps in this race as uh, as they happen on track. So uh, bear with us as we do get uh, updates on those positions because uh, they they will change. Rodrigo Triana up to fifth. Jaime Moore has jumped up to P7 ahead of Alex White. Meanwhile, Mikey Monahan off to a great start running P6. Yeah, and teammate to Mike Monahan, Esteban Palacio, has picked up a position but only to 20th over David Rowley, who has slipped back through the field from his 11th starting position. Real Triana in here. Jaime Moore under intense pressure from White. Ooh, Mikey getting it a little sideways here in this last complex. Ooh, Felipe Triana getting out of shape. Smose is looking to take advantage but unable to. Well, if you're a guy that's uh, behind another guy you'd like to get ahead of, and I suppose wouldn't we all, you know, you could only have to wait until that guy's tires go off. So uh, um, we are going to see some guys closing up or dropping back as uh, these stints wear on. Temp track temperature now 103 degrees, and that's not going to help these tires out at all. Yeah, you're, uh, you're, you're exactly right there, Brad. The, the tire situation here, like we mentioned, times already. It's definitely going to be a factor. More so uh, for that the Dunlop shot cars. I think the, the Jags are going to struggle a bit and the BMW of Gooden who's leading this race currently. So he may start to fade late in the stint. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Yeah, real possibility out. The Dunlops don't much care for the heat. They don't run quite as well. They do have a little extra wear rate. Gooden's leads now 1.4 seconds over over uh, Preto, who's running in second. So uh, just uh, just a tough start for Poole. Qualified at the front and didn't even make a corner before he found himself in the back of the pack. Well, that's going to be terribly uh, gutting, of course, but. Uh, you know, I assume that he'll be able to show some good patience, uh, be able to pick up spots here and there. Uh, who knows, David Poole could still be in line for a great finish. Uh, anything could happen on this track. Ryan Schleif throwing up all kinds of sparks, but I tell you what, he's had a great start as well. He's moved up to P12 in that sun red. Yeah, moved up right away to the 16th position, has since uh, moved forward from there as well. Hamilton 13th. Looking for the back here. Johnny Lugnuts and Thomas Schubeck in the points. Followed by Kevin Miller as well in the last points paying position. Mike Tressler just out of the points running in fifth, uh, 17th. Alejandro Nieto 18th. John Houston running 19th. Ooh, as we have a we have a ooh, big incident here. One car locked up. Looks like that. Schubeck, Trussler involved. Nieto. I think that was Schubeck's Mercedes that locked up there right in the bad. Right at the entry of that fast chicane. And boy, that caused some serious damage. That's unfortunate. Now, unfortunate for PMR's chances tonight as Thomas Schubeck has indeed disconnected from this race. 
David Poole has moved up to the 24th position. He's right behind Ryan Story. Greg Myers running 22nd. Looks like Poole has dropped as well. So the attrition beginning to uh, rear its ugly head here. Oh, I gotta, I gotta wonder if that was a mistake from David Poole trying to work traffic out there. Boy, so that just makes a bad night even worse. Uh, it's, it's tough, but I have to assume that was a problem negotiating traffic. You just gotta try to stay as patient as you can in those situations. May not have worked out. So Parsons, after going off here in this uh, corkscrew, was fall back to 35th, is now up to 27. Douglas running 26th. Matt Taylor in the Viper 28th. Halili getting chased down by Rich Roman in 30th. Not sure what happened to Rich, but he's falling well back here in this grid. In the field, I should say. Yeah, I did see an off track excursion from Rich Roman. Uh, uh, didn't look that bad, but maybe there's there's been another one as well. Mascarelli 31st. Chris Jackson running 32nd in the GT. Dan Wilkerson, 33rd. He looks like he's already got some lap traffic coming up on him. Doing a good job to stay out of the way. So yeah, Dan uh, recovering from that puncture he had earlier. John Wathens parked. So. Back out front, the story. Wyatt Gooden, three seconds up on Prato. Yeah, Wyatt just in the last couple laps here has extended that uh, gap to Andres Prieto a little bit. Andres Prieto, I think, uh, trying to push a little too hard here in the early going and making some mistakes. So Prieto, back three seconds, his teammate has now just fallen back to fourth as Marty Uren has made the pass on Monroy. So Marty showing some pace here and uh, we'll see if he's able to climb into, uh, into Andre's lead. Yeah, not showing the same lap to lap pace yet as Andre's, but uh, Marty Uren is not carrying weight here tonight, uh, whereas Andre's Prieto is. Could make a difference. A very tight battle from 5th back to about 10th uh, at the moment. Yes, we have Triana leading Mike Monahan, uh, Alex White, Jaime Moore, Felipe Triana, Chris Moses, and Montgomery Jr. as Moses. Really whipping that Mercedes around. Yeah, I suspect that they would have had to loosen up that Mercedes quite a bit to get around some of the corners on this track. The report from the pit lane is a little technical issue from the uh, second PMR Mercedes of uh, Schubeck. It's the cause of that uh, unfortunate incident collected uh, Nieto and Trussler. Christian Hamilton had a good start there in 11th Ooh, or so. Triana Triana runs wide. White takes advantage. Monaghan ran wide as well and that has moved White up to P5. And there you go. One corner, two spots for White. Now in the top five. Unbelievable. Wow. So what a break for Alex White. Yeah, still a long way to go, of course, but uh, always always feels good to get those positions, uh, no matter how they come, come to you. Yeah, I was just going to mention Christian Hamilton. He's uh, just off a couple spots where he started, but uh, just wanted to mention him for, for having such bad luck this season. It's so far so good for Christian Hamilton in 13. 
So that little incident dropped Triana back to 11th. Yeah, big mistake there, costing them obviously a bunch of positions. That Porsche will get very good fuel economy. It's pretty good on its tires too, so chance to move up through pit stops. So let's see if Monahan's able to answer now and try and uh, reel Alex White in a little bit here. Looks like White may have some pace on Monaghan. Ooh, as Felipe Triana runs it wide, Montgomery gets by, Moses gets by, and Felipe Triana gets by his brother. So we missed uh, Montgomery's pass on Moses. I'm not sure if Moses threw it wide or if he just got... Uh, taken by Montgomery so we missed that one a lot going on here mid pack yeah too bad for the Triana guys uh, Felipe actually had moved up quite a bit from his starting position so uh, it's unfortunate he gave back some of those positions right there so after getting by Monroy Marty has really started to gap uh, put a gap between him and Mon right now. He's trying to reel pray to win, but looks like he's losing a bit of time to Andre. But meanwhile, the story, like we said up front, Gooden continues to lead by four and a half seconds over Preto. Right, David Rowley, I think, has come in for an early pit stop. He has indeed, so, uh, you know, <laughs> It could be in that BMW that their pit window is open, uh, so this could be some type of scheduled stop. Yeah, I'm not sure this is a uh, interesting move here by Rally. Not sure what's uh, what, what precipitated this, but he is in early, working lap 11. Yeah, yeah. I didn't see if he had any damage or not, but it's very possible that uh, they are in a pit window. Likely, even battle here between Rich Roman and Matt Taylor for this 24th spot. Roman taking a look on the inside of Taylor and looks like he might get it done. Maybe not. Nope. So Taylor doing a good job defending that position. It's Roman getting sideways on the exit. Up Douglas giving up that position to Parsons and was moved up to 22nd but Parsons really not able to make up much ground as Story has a moment on the on the curbing allowed Trussler to get by Parsons taking a look on the inside of Story. Yeah, and as you watch that battle, I can give you a quick update. Jaime Moore, Salem Montgomery Jr., and Chris Moses are fighting tooth and nail over that seventh position, going at it really tight at the moment. I'll tell you what, Story doing a good job holding off Parsons. Parsons. Put a contact there. Looks like he's giving up a spot to Douglas. It looks like Parsons may be uh, struggling a bit with that Audi, especially on throttle. Yeah, well, I think he is, and also I think he did pick up some damage. Saw him uh, in actually rubbing against the wall, and, uh, well, we saw that there in the chicane, so I think he may have picked up some damage there as well. So meanwhile, uh, Jack Ivey's running 18th, Myers 19th, so Ivey pretty quiet. He doesn't have much going on around him. Palacio just out of the points in 17th. Kevin Miller still running in the points and uh, putting in a good performance here tonight. Qualified relatively well. 
He's got John Houston right up the road, as well as Ryan Schleif. Nice battle for the 15th spot. Bruin. Gotta give Schleif credit for picking that Sunred. Wouldn't have been my first pick. Or my 20th pick. <laughs> well, it's a it's a, it's been a proven car in the past by uh, by those rare uh, uh, gentlemen who uh, who are excellent drivers. So Ryan Schleich putting it to good use. Uh, it certainly has. Uh, it's it's won several races and I think a championship or two. So oh, a Schleif! Oh boy, he takes it off the final corner there and spins it hard into the wall he gets it going again but drops out of the points now to 17th we'll fall back to 18th as ivy now trying to contend for that 17th spot so well, met that's part of the problem with that sun red it'll bite you and it just did there for schleif Yeah, not the most nimble of cars, really, so uh, I'm sure that he has had to loosen that thing up as well uh, to get it around some of these tight turns. I'll tell you what, Johnny Lugnut's looking strong here, running 13th, just behind Christian Hamilton. But you, uh, you mentioned that this battle the Trianas, Moses, and Montgomery, especially. Wow, these guys are fighting tooth and nail. Yeah, and they have been for the last four or five laps. Uh, <laughs> it's been uh, uh, some, a pretty intense affair with uh, one guy closing up to another and then dropping back to fall into the clutches of another guy, then coming back to station as, as they were. So, quite a fight. with Chris Moses. As he tries to get past Montgomery. Looking up the road a little bit. Monahan still trailing Alex White. And Jaime Moore just up ahead of Montgomery. Yeah, and as you watch that battle, I'm going to take a look back up the front and uh, take a look at timing and scoring here. And what I'm seeing now is that uh, that uh, those gap that gap to Wyatt Gooden to Andre from Andres Prieto actually has held. Oh, as we have a Porsche off in that battle, Al. Oh, I think that was Felipe. That was Triana. Heavy damage. Oh, that is unfortunate. Oh, that front end of that Porsche is in pieces. Oh, and he's parked it. Well, we meant, I mentioned it earlier, that chicane. He did just that. He hit that uh, tire wall, and it was devastating. Wow. That takes him out of the mix. So go yes, ahead, it Sorry. does indeed. No, no, we, we had action out there on track. I was just going to say the gap to, to White Gooden has uh, stabilized. So Andres Prieto now running similar lap times to White Gooden as we... Uh, Still have a few laps yet to go here before our pit stop. Boy with Jaime Moore. Chased down by Montgomery. Well, I've been kind of keeping an eyeball here on Esteban Palacio. Started pretty far back, but now runs up into the 15th spot. So picking up a few spots, Esteban Palacio carrying a little bit of weight, of course, uh, from last week's uh, penalty he took. So Lili's off track.
take a look at this. Mikey Monahan running in P6. He's got Dave Rally all over the back of him, who's a lap down, pitted early. If you're Monahan, do you just let him go, or? Well, I do. <laughs> but, uh, but I'm not Mike Monahan. I think I might do the same as Rally's tires are surely a lot fresher than, uh, than Mikey's. And by the looks of it, it looks like uh, Rally's got pace on Monahan. Yeah, Mike Monahan now running laps in the mid 24s, 24 flats. Rally quite a bit quicker than that. Uh, but uh, part of those lap times for Mike Monahan is trying to keep David Rally behind him. Up front. Yeah, you're right. Gooden's uh, lead remains about four and a half seconds. He got off to a quick three second lead, increased it slightly to four and a half a bunch of laps ago, and it's remained pretty stable at that. Yeah, uh, Wyatt's lap time last time by was a little bit better than some of his more recent laps. Uh, I'm surely as, uh, as they work their way through traffic, those times will change a little bit, but Andre's uh, so good on pit stops. Uh, and Wyatt untested here on these NAGP pit stops. It'll be very interesting to see what happens if Andres can maintain this gap until uh, that pit stop rotation. Well, that was going to be my next point here is that big uh, unknown for goodness. You know, when, when is he going to pit? What's he going to do in the pit if he can get out quick enough to hold that lead? It's all a bunch of unknowns here, so. Well, had a chance to uh, chat a little bit with Wyatt uh, over the course of the, the week of practice here, and Wyatt had a lot of questions, uh, actually, and a lot of them did have to do with pit stops, so I think he is prepared as well as he can anyway, but uh, we'll see how it works out in the heat of battle. So, fast lap of the race is a 21.8 for Gooden. Uh, compare that to Preto with a 22 flat. So Preto's last lap was a 22.6 to Gooden's 22.3. Early guys in the 22s this early. I mean, this late in the step. I'm continuing to watch that battle over seventh place. We have had uh, other people that were involved in that battle, not so much now, but uh, Jaime Moore and Salem Montgomery Jr. are still fighting it out here. They've been around each other the whole race. Uh, so quite a battle going on there uh, between those guys. Chris Moses has dropped back a little bit from uh, Salem. Right on Salem's tail for a while, but it's started to fade. You wonder if those the tires on that uh, Mercedes are starting to go. Especially the way Moses drives that thing. Yeah, I think that's exactly it, Al. Um, but, you know, that's uh, that's going to happen. Some cars are going to suffer from it more than others. And, of course, driving style won't help. Um, but I tell you another guy I've been kind of keeping an eyeball on here in 12th is John Houston. John Houston putting together a fine run for that TBROK Dam Bam team. Teammate Aaron Parsons not yet back into the points, however. Oh, Triana now dives into the pit lane. Let's see where we're at now. Right around lap 20, so these guys should start to come in. Right around 21 now or the next lap. So Felipe looks like he's the first guy to act. Yeah, the track temperature hasn't come up anymore. In fact, it's gone down just a degree or two. But uh, certainly these guys are going to want to be getting off these tires as uh, quickly as they can. Let's see if Gooden decides to dive in now. Somebody's gone off to his, to his 
right, but Gooden stays out. Oh, Halili's come in. Brito stayed out. Yeah, that gap uh, back to Andres Prieto has opened up here in the last uh, lap or two uh, a bit more now. Running about five and a half seconds off the pace of Wyatt Gooden. Alex White in the pits. Monahan in the pits. Yeah, some hard fought out. ground for. Go ahead. Sorry, Al, some, some hard fought ground for Alex White as he heads into that pit stop, so he'll want a good one not to give any of that ground back. He's not going to. He's going to want a good stop because Mikey Monahan dove in right behind him, so. I don't think Mikey will be able to get out quick enough, but we'll have to wait and see as we see. Uh, has dropped. Parsons has stayed out. Trussler in. Holman remains out on track. He's got Ivy on his tail. Brian Story out. Matt Taylor in the pits. Chuck Carter is going to stay out. Yato in. Felipe Triana. Now he was caught up in that. I think he went off. I don't remember now. I think he went off on his own. I'm, I'm not quite sure. A lot, of, a lot of things have happened so far this race. All right, to keep yeah, up. they sure have. Well yeah, Juan Monroy now into the pits, and it just occurred to me, Al, you know, this is a pretty tight pit lane. Uh, and uh, and these guys, you know, if they are running it close on fuel, they don't get that pit like as uh, somebody's in their stall. Boy, it could be a few laps they have to run around this place before they can get in. Yep, so Monroy is in. Moses is elected to stay out. Houston in. Palacios in. Yeah, Moses' lap times have really dropped off uh, what his best lap times were. And I wonder if maybe he is uh, one of the guys having trouble getting a pit entry light. Parsons has come in. Roman into the pits. Preto looks like he's come in. Wyatt staying out. As Pareto comes in, Uren is in. So this could be uh, an experience factor at work. Oh boy, Salem Montgomery Jr. and Jaime Moore had, had an epic battle the whole race, but Salem Montgomery Jr. has thrown it off track here. Uh, just before the pit lane, I don't know if he's going to come in now or not, but uh, that battle is... Uh, uh, not going good for Salem Montgomery Jr. now as he does t bring it into the pit. Moses comes in and Salem, you're right, does bring it in. So, interesting to see how long Wyatt Gooden's going to keep it out on track. We have seen new guys tend to run uh, uh, quite a bit longer than, uh, than some of the experienced NAGP guys and lose some time out there on track on worn uh, rubber. So, we'll see how long uh, Wyatt takes it here on track. Rich. How's the uh, Rich Roman reporting from in the car? How's we just exiting the pit lane? How's the car feeling? And it's better than I am. How's the but uh, a, lot of, the a lot of bad driving going on out here. How are the tires holding up in this uh, this hot uh, track temps? Uh, my tires are pretty good. I mean, if I had some more practice, I might have double stinted my tires. Wow. Well, keep at it, Rich, and uh, good luck there. See if you can get into the points. Thank you. Well, there you have it. Well, interesting news on the tires there. That uh, I wouldn't have expected that even from the Ferrari, which is pretty good on those uh, shoes. So Wyatt into the pit lane. Prato. We're going to have to keep an eye on this, see if uh, Prato can come out and uh, get by Wyatt. 
after the stops here. I'll tell you what, it's got quite a bit of gap on Preto. Yeah. Yeah, he does. Why it not down yet? He's down now and he's away. Yeah, I think Andre is going to pick up a little bit of time, but uh, all in all, pretty good stop for Wyatt. Ooh, Andres will actually pick up quite a bit of time. Yeah, Andres definitely did pick up some time on Wyatt, but Wyatt still comes out ahead. Right, yeah, it will be a boost. Go ahead. It will be a boost to Andres, you know, to uh, to see that gap close a little bit. He's gonna have to do something, I think, pretty spectacular to get in front. But uh, uh, he knows if he doesn't, he's likely gonna lose some ground toward the end of this next stint. I'll tell you what, one thing I've seen from Wyatt is his uh, just how clean he's driving. He's you know really nice lines and just in control, you know, not, not, not uh, taking any risks. So yeah, so far so good. Race. I tell you, that there's, there's one thing in Andres' uh, favor which could offer a little bit of hope to him here. He does tend to get a little stronger as, uh, as the races go on. So I don't know if it's gonna, he's going to be able to overcome this type of uh, pace that Wyatt's on, but it could be a little glimmer of hope for him here as these laps wind down. So the gap was about uh, five and a half, six seconds after the pit, but... Rachel did make up uh, a bunch of time in that stop. As Greg Meyer still yet to pit, is leading this race. And that uh, lead will change over once he dives in. Take a look further back as Monroy. Oh. What a play by Monroy coming out ahead of Uren. Yeah, must have taken some pointers from teammate Andres Prieto on those pit stops, and uh, certainly Juan Monroy is going to be giving uh, Marty Uren some more fits. So, it looks like middle middle of that last stint, uh, Uren had a bit of pace on Monroy, but as that stint wind, uh, wound down, Monroy really closed that gap back up. So, if Monroy can, can manage that middle part of the stint a little better, he could... Uh, finish ahead of Marty here. He could. A guy I kind of kept my eye on on the pit stop rotation was Kevin Miller. Was uh, running in the points there in 14th, but has slipped out of the points on that pit stop rotation, now running 17th. So White currently running 6th. He'll move up a position once, uh, once Greg Myers decides to pit. On a hand. Well, it came out uh, gap about the same as what they were when they went in. So, so it looks like Monahan had a pretty decent stop. Yeah, I would say he might even have picked up just a little bit of time there on Alex, uh, half a second, second maybe. So, uh, yeah, very good stop by Mike. Looks like Cup Douglas had a moment there on the front straight as Moses came out ahead of Jaime Moore, who had that. Uh, incident late in that uh, first stint with Montgomery Jr. Triana, meanwhile, comes out ahead of Montgomery Jr. This is a battle. Yeah, Salem showing great pace here. Right, right along with Salem here. Battle for the 10th spot. Ooh, Salem takes, takes it a little wide, but has survived. And meanwhile, Christian Hamilton has joined the party. 
Hamilton. Hamilton running in 12th. Break out the balloons. It's a party, Al. After that early stop by Rally, he now finds himself in 13th with John Houston about to put him down to 14th. Nice pass by Houston into one. Great job. Yeah, nice nice pass by John. And as you uh, look through the field there, I'll give you a quick update. Marty Uran is closing up now on Juan Monroy. Palacio in this mix as well. He's looking to, uh, to gain a position on Rally. So Rally late in his stint. He may be able to, come to uh, finish the race, but he pitted, pitted uh, a lot earlier than everybody else. Uh, his, his tires may uh, start to fade here late. Might give up a few well, positions. Yeah, and it obviously hurt him getting caught, caught up in traffic uh, that was on Warren tires. So a strategy perhaps not working out so well there for David. Wow. So rally. Lucky to survive that big slide. Solid run here in 13th. Let's take a look further back, see where everybody comes out. Johnny Lugnuts currently 16th. Kevin Miller running 17th. Parsons still out of the points in 18th. So, really a tough night for Parsons. Ryan Schleif 19th. Trussell's running in the 20th position. Roman now running 21st. He's about, about to get put a lap down by, I believe that's Andre. So Ivy getting caught up with some uh, some lap traffic. It looks like Monroy and Marty. So that was a bit interesting there. Matt Taylor, it's allowed him to crawl up on uh, on Jack. So these guys are duking it up for that 22nd spot. Yeah, and as you continue to run down the field, another update for you. Andres Preto has turned in the fastest lap of the race now to 21.6. Wyatt Gooden is responding, turning in his last three laps in the 21 range, but not quite as good. That gap staying stationary about 1.5 seconds. Ryan Story up to 24th, Chuck Carter running 25th, Gup Douglas 26th, Mascarelli 27th, Alejandro Nieto back at 28th, Dan Wilkerson running 29th, Chris Jackson 30th, that's your running cars. I'm curious to see where Greg Myers I'm not sure if Greg has pitted yet or not, but he is running in the third no. spot. Okay, so he has yet to pit. Interesting strategy here from Greg. I suspect he may try and double stint his tires. Well, I would think so. We uh, heard from Rich that the tires are holding up really well in the Ferrari, and I suspect if Greg Myers is going to take it this late, he will double stint the tires, but... Uh, in this case, it's not going to work out very well for him. Um, I don't think he's going to gain a whole bunch of positions from where he might have finished otherwise. Um, just losing too much time out there on worn shoes. So this battle up front. Holding... Uh, Uh, that gap uh, remaining steady here at about, let's see what it is, about a second and change between Preto and um, Good. Go ahead, Brett. Yeah, Andres has given it one heck of a run. I don't know if he's going to be able to keep it up or not, but uh, he is really flogging the thing at the moment. 
Uh, Wyatt, I think, has responded by lifting his lap times as well. Continues to run in the high 21s in the 21.9 range, but uh, I don't think Andres Prieto is going to be able to hold this type of pace uh, over the last uh, remaining laps here. So, so far, a very impressive debut by Wyatt Gooden. Leading the field here in GT2 after stops by uh, just over a second over reigning GT2 champion Andres Preto from Colombia. Yeah, and as you watch that battle, Marty Uren has put a hip check on Juan Monroy and goes by in the third corner. So Marty flexing his muscle here in this second stint. Yeah, does that yeah, a, a bit. Ooh, has, oh, uh, Johnny Lugnuts missing his front clip. Oh. So what it's happened? Not going to help the turn in around this place. No, so Johnny coming in for service. Yeah, as he comes in, there's quite a battle brewing here between Felipe Triana, Salem Montgomery Jr., and Christian Hamilton over the tenth spot. Those guys are coming together quickly. So there you see Johnny with the uh, heavy damage to the front of his uh, Audi. Marty starting to gap uh, Monroy a little bit here. While Alex White running in the sixth position, starting starting to reel uh, Greg Myers, who's running in fifth. Mikey Monahan. You know, I'll tell you what. You got to give Mikey credit. He's Really maintaining that gap to White. White hasn't really left Mikey in the dust at all. Uh, yep, absolutely. Out. As now Salem Montgomery Jr. goes for a pass on Felipe Triana. Oh, oh, and there's a big coming to. So Triana yeah, involved. Yeah, that's probably not the best place you want to make a make a move like that. Christian Hamilton, he lucky uh, to get through that unscathed. I think Jaime Moore might have been involved in that. Yeah, that was a three-way battle over that tenth spot there, and it finally had a had a disastrous end for a couple guys. Particularly Salem Montgomery Jr. now is slotted back in the 14th position, and Esteban Palacio goes through for the 12th. Jaime Moore just had a moment of himself, but Felipe Triana, big loser in that affair. And meanwhile, back at the front, Andres Prieto has closed to within about a second of Wyatt Gooden now. Wyatt Gooden, a couple bad laps. I don't know if he was uh, having to work some traffic or what, but uh, Wyatt had lifted his pace, and I'm wondering if he might not have done some damage to those uh, Dunlops, Al. Well, the track temperature has remained steady. Hasn't changed at all. It uh, remains 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So right along, on board with Preto for the lead. Yeah, as you do, uh, I'll mention Gregory Myers has just now come into the pits from the fifth position. Yeah, Andre's low 22s last time by Wyatt put in a 22, but it was a 23.5 the lap prior to that.
Boy, Andre's uh, really the last couple seasons really has become a bulldog. Once he gets his teeth into your leg, he just doesn't really want to let go. Uh, double step. He's away. Yeah, it looks like he'll slot in the 17th position. So, yeah, I think it was a couple positions picked up for Greg. But uh, all in all, probably a wash. Good coming up on some lap traffic again. Uh, to deal with this. Obviously, uh, Freitas is going to have to deal with it the same way as Gooden here. So, it's all a matter of how quickly you can get by. Yeah, 22-1 to a 22-2. Ooh, it's Gooden uh, Prieto. This Johnson has a moment. have a uh, BMW off track there, stage left. Yeah, I think Wyatt's tires have gone off, you know, he hasn't been held up by this lap car too much. Andres Prieto now within a half second of the lead. Oh, you, I, I don't think he, he was on stand, so I don't think he double stinted. He definitely took tires. It would just seem awfully quick for awful quick for those tires to go. Well, he was pushing him. He was pushing him damn hard there, Al. Uh, those opening laps. I don't think he was the first stint. He didn't need to. David Poole had gone out. He was able to set a nice, comfortable pace there at the front, and Andres Prieto uh, kind of forced him to uh, raise that pace. So I, I suspect that's what's going on. Could be wrong. It's happened once or twice, Al. Andre, putting the heat on, good. Meanwhile, just ahead of them is Greg Myers. A uh, 22-2 last time by for Greg Myers. I gotta think he has changed tires. I don't think there's any way he would be able to maintain that type of lap speed without. Yeah, you're probably right there, Brad. As he's doing a decent job ahead of these guys, he's not uh, slowing them up really at, at all. No, he'll dive immediately out of the way if, uh, as soon as he thinks he's holding them up. A uh, lot of, lot of experience, old Gregory Myers, no doubt. Second stint is flying by. Yeah, we've had uh, we've had some interesting storylines uh, out there for sure. One of them I'm watching now is Esteban Palacio uh, putting some moves on John Houston over the tenth position. Hasn't been, been able to get by John Houston yet, but he continues to try to make inroads. And Salem Montgomery Jr. trying to take over the twelfth position from David Rally. Spot for Wyatt to be in here. He's got uh, Preto all over the back of him, and he's got some lap traffic up ahead. And Preto. Yes. 
you patient here, waiting this stint. Once he sees an open opportunity open up, I'm sure he'll go for it. Yeah, Wyatt's just not giving him many, is he? No, he's, uh, he's really running uh, great laps here. Very, like I said, very consistent. He's not uh, folding under the pressure here from Preto. So a great, great job by uh, Wyatt. Myers lets uh, Wyatt and Preto by. Yeah, I think Wyatt felt that uh, Greg uh, didn't quite get over fast enough, but uh, I think it's one of those situations Gregory had to uh, commit to his line so everybody was safe through there, and uh, I think in the end that was the right way to go, go about it. Tense battle here in the final laps at Birmingham. We got uh, newcomer Wyatt Gooden in his first ever GT2 race here at NAGP, leading from the drop of the green flag, leading this race. And under intense pressure here now late from reigning GT2 champion Andres Preto. Once again, with some uh, lap traffic up ahead, I believe that is Aaron Parsons. Yeah, Aaron as well won't become involved in that battle. Great job getting through lap cars. Take a look further back here real quick. Marty Uren leading currently in the third position over Marty Uren. I mean uh, Juan Monroy. Alex Wright, uh, White P5. And I'll tell you what, Mikey Monahan has closed that gap a little bit on White. Yeah, he has a little bit. Uh, Juan Monroy as well has taken a look at uh, that gap to Marty Uren. That gap has stayed pretty stable too, but Bonroy not been, been able to uh, make big chunks of ground on Marty Uren for third. Chris Moses running in P7. I mean more. This Viper sandwich here. Between the two Vipers uh, running in P8. Hamilton not far behind him in ninth. And John Houston in the top 10. Palacio in 11th. Montgomery Jr. running in 12th. Rally in 13th. Triana's running 14th. Kevin Miller running 15th. And Greg Myers in the last points paying position here. Back out front. It's Brato and Good. Yeah, we do have a few laps uh, here to go yet, and Mike Monahan is actually getting pretty close to Alex White for that fifth position. Currently working, I believe, lap 41. Probably have, uh, should end at lap 42, so. Let's see if, uh. Again, with some lap traffic up ahead, it's going to allow. Ooh, as they have a little bump there. Mike gets by okay. Preto, however, getting hung up. 
by one of the M3s. Ooh, Wyatt taking a little wide in the turn one. It's going to allow uh, Preto to close the gap a bit. Yeah, this should be the last lap of the race. Just ahead of Gooden. Gooden gets by okay. Yeah, Andres really made a desperate move there into that uh, last chicane complex and uh, lost a good half second there in one in one whack. Be it. Yep, one more oh, at least. One to go. Sorry to get everybody's hopes up. Boy, that's going to give Monahan a chance. Now within half a second of Alex White for fifth. Wow, Monaghan really putting the pressure on here with a lap to go. Back up to the leaders. Wow, just a tremendous amount of traffic these guys have had to work through. Like if he can get through these last couple uh, corners here, why it's gonna hang on to it? That's it. Wyatt Gooden wins the race, Preto second. Just an amazing run for Wyatt. Marty Uren should take the third spot. Juan Monroy fourth. This battle for the fifth spot between White. Ooh, as White has a big moment. Big Jag power. I don't know if he'll be able to get uh, quite enough run on him. Not enough. Chris Moses ends up uh, quietly finishing in seventh after a hectic uh, first stint. He's got no one really around him. So good job for Moses. I mean, Moore just takes it off track. Christian Hamilton's not far off, but it looks like Moore may be able to hang on to that eighth spot. Great finish for Hamilton. John Houston finishes in the top 10. Palacio 11th. Rally's going to take 12th. And those are the last of your lead lap cars. What a run. Let's see if we can have a talk here with Wyatt. I know he's in vent. Wyatt Gooden, do you copy? Hello, Wyatt. Hey, yeah, I'm back, sorry. Hey, Wyatt, how you doing? It's Al and Brad in the broadcast booth. Congratulations on a tremendous win here tonight. Your first ever NAGP GT2 race, and you come home with the victory. How does it feel? <laughs> 
Hey, thanks. Yeah, sorry about that. I was uh, I had to get up for a second. That was pretty uh, pretty exhausting. <laughs> Trying to hang onto the car there at the last minute, but uh, that was really fun. I had a lot of fun. Great race. Yeah, it looked. Yeah, it looked wide, like maybe Andres was uh, really lifting his pace there after pit stops in that second stint, and uh, and maybe you need to lift yours a little bit too. Uh, you can mention that, but I was also kind of wondering about the nerves going into your first NAGP event here tonight. How'd they hold up over the course of the race? Uh, yeah, it was it was pretty good. Um, I mean, it was definitely difficult, and uh, you know, hard to keep focused the whole time, especially the second stint with the pressure. But uh, that's what's so fun about doing these races, you know, is is overcoming that pressure. So that was uh, that was pretty re pretty rewarding win for sure. Yeah, you did a great job holding off uh, Preto last season's uh, GT2 champion, uh, especially with all that traffic you guys encountered. So certainly a great run. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. Well, congratulations, uh, Wyatt, and a great debut. Hopefully, you uh, continue to run with us here on Monday nights and. Uh, Continue, uh, continue where you let where you leave off tonight. So it's a very impressive first run for you, and uh, looking for uh, some great more races from you, uh, for more great races from you in the future. Yeah, yeah. Thanks again, and and big thank you to you guys who uh, put on such a great league too. Uh, it was my first time running GTR2, and I played a lot of R Factor, but uh, obviously I didn't quite get the the, the pit stop uh, down 100%. I think I lost like five seconds in the pit. Yeah, I'm sure you'll get that sorted out soon enough, but uh, you did a pretty uh, pretty good job getting in and out of there ahead of Andre. So, uh, But, again, great job tonight, and we um, we'll look forward to seeing you uh, next week. Yeah, thanks again. Well, there you have it. Newcomer Wyatt Gooden coming out of nowhere to win in his first ever NAGP GT2 race at Birmingham. Yeah, congrats to Wyatt. Uh, well done. Uh, I, I don't know if it's a surprise or not. I don't think you really can say it is with the amount of uh, practice and obvious skill that the guys got. Um, yeah, if, from from my money, I think the storyline's uh, David Poole going out early. What a uh, what a race we would have had uh, possibly between those three guys uh, at the front if uh, David Poole had stayed around. And Alex White really did a tremendous job. Uh, uh, ran a very clean race tonight. Takes uh, that fifth position. Loses some weight as well. So Alex White uh, doing very well here in the second half of the season. He certainly did. And uh, yeah, it's a shame what happened to Poole, but. Uh, you know, this was uh, a race I'm, I'm sure he uh, he thought he could win. So, But a tough start for David and a tough night for him. But on the contrary, a great, great night for Wyatt Good, um, to win here at Birmingham. Um, that's uh, no small order there. He, uh, he put in a great run. So uh, thanks for everybody uh, tuning in tonight. Hopefully you enjoyed the broadcast. Next week we'll be coming to you from Estero for round seven. And... Uh, Hopefully you can join us then. Uh, until then, next week, uh, this Thursday coming up, we'll be uh, running GT1 at Donington, round six. So join Jack Ivey and Ken Rodriguez for that race. So until next week from Mesero, Brad, thanks again for helping out in the broadcast, and we'll see you all next week. Thanks, Al.